Miss Benita Brantley, the Trading Diva, the HFS Sniper. And I want to thank everyone for joining this evening and being on the call. Again, welcome, welcome, welcome. So if you haven't did this yet, please put in the chat where you're calling from and your affirmations, because it's very important that we want to recognize everyone who they are calling from all over the world. And as long as everyone is putting their affirmations and believing what is going to happen. So let's get started because there are some great things that I want to get into tonight. I am ready to jump in the market and see what's going on. Um, I know there's a few things that's currently going on um, in other countries, but we'll get there. We will get there. So um, welcome again, everyone, to the call. And let me just check the chat to see where everyone is calling from. So let's see where we have, because I know, you know, we have some favorites on here, some, some people who love to join our calls and be with us and spend time with us. And I just want to say thank you to everyone who is taking their time out their day to be here this evening, to be able to learn something and make money, because that's what this call is all about. So welcome. Um, welcome to Welcome Cleveland. Cleveland is on the call. Minnesota is on the call. And let's see. And as again, Cleveland and Minnesota and Milwaukee. All right. And Orlando showed up tonight on the call. So welcome, welcome, welcome to the call. And as I always say, if you don't have any affirmations, you can always use the BYOB affirmations if you don't have any until you can be able to create some of your own. So let's go over the affirmations that we have, right? Our affirmations are, I am a master trader, right? Because that's what we all are. We are master traders. I am the signal. I profit on all my trades. I am 777. So I know you guys probably see the 777 in our chat. And that means, you know, people had cashed out on that particular trade. And that's what we want to continue to keep happening. And of course, you know, I'm not going to leave out my favorite um, affirmation. So my affirmation that I like to share with you guys is I am a bold, confident, educated, BYOB master trader, anointed for wealth on my trades and in profit. Yes, that's what I like to say. I am bold and confident in everything that I do. So that's what you have to be in life. Whatever it is that you do, be bold about it, be confident about it and get things done. And that's what we're gonna do tonight, right? So before we get started, I just like to know who we have on our call. If you are brand new to the call or are a beginner when it comes to trading, um, HFX is what I'm going to say, put your one one ones in the chat. And if you've been trading HFX for quite some time and, and you've been cashing out, you can put your two, two, twos in the chat just so we know who we are working with tonight. Um, and so we know who are on the call. So we know how to address the call because I want to make sure that everyone is addressed. Um, everyone, you know, may have questions and I want to make sure that we get that to everyone. So if you can please put your one one ones and your two two twos in the chat, we are getting ready to get started here um, with my charts. Oh, I put everything. Give me one second. I will be sharing my screen with you guys here shortly while I get everything together on my other screen. Uh, but I do want to say um, for everyone who out there have been practicing HFX and been posting it in the chat, I want to say thank you for at least attempting and trying it out um, and working at it because it is something that you too have to continue to work at. Um, it's not an overnight thing, you know, and that's in anything that we do, right? It takes time to learn the skill um, and to be able to you know, be the master trader that you are. So thank you guys for, you know, attempting um, the uh, attempting to learn how to trade with HFX. So I do appreciate that because I do see your postings in our chat. 
So <clears throat> you should be able to see my screen right now. Um, let's see, something else that I wanna go over. You should be able to see my screen. Um, and I do have the chart up, but I do also wanna address this because I believe there's gonna be a little bit of, I don't wanna say craziness, but you may see a little bit of movement um, that's been going on um, pretty, um, more than usual, I should say, in the evening around this time. Because when I had checked um, the news and I had it up here, I checked the news and we have something coming up in 24 minutes. Uh, but then when I looked at our other one, uh, we had something, oh, uh oh, I ended up losing it. Anyhow, we had something at nine o'clock as well. So I think we had something at nine and we had something at 9.30. So you may see the, you may see the market move a little bit different tonight is what I should say than it normally does, right? So, which is fine, you know, that's what the market do. So we have no control over that. The market does what it wanna do. So again, welcome to the call, welcome to the call. Um, again, for just in case you don't know where you are and what call you jumped on. <laughs> You are currently on a BYOB cash out HFX simplified. This is the call that you are on just in case you wasn't sure, you know, what's going on tonight. Cause I know there's times we jump on calls and we're not hundred percent sure. So um, it looked like we had a lot of experienced traders on tonight. So that's a great thing. That's a good thing. So what I want to do now is I want to go over our BYOB cash out strategy. I want to go over that right now before we dive in to the market to see what's going on in the market. So again, uh, for HFX, and I'm hoping everybody, I hope you have your pen, your paper, your laptops in front of you, you know, so you can follow along because I want you guys to learn as well. You know, it's not all about just me talking and me teaching and telling you guys, you know, what to look for and when to get in. But I also want some participation from you guys too, just to make sure that you guys understand what's going on. Um, so I hope everyone have everything in front of them so we all can learn and make money together, right? So that's what this call is all about. We wanna learn and make some money. So let's go over the BYOB cash out strategy. And since I'm on a three minute time frame, because this is HFX, let me see, let me move in. And so what pair is this? I guess we can use this pair. We can use this one. Um, you know, and this, you know, I think this actually be a good pair to use because someone had mentioned to me um, sometime this week, I was helping somebody with the strategy and going over the strategy with them you know, so they can get some clarity in their trades. And, you know, a lot of times when I'm looking at the market, I like to look for like clean trades, I guess you want to say, so I can go over the strategy so everybody can get a better understanding. But this particular person was like, no, no, no. <laughs> I just want you to click on one that's not so clean, you know, because I need to know, you know, what's going to happen in the market if this, if this goes this way, if that goes that way. So, um, as you can see, though, this has been going on for quite some time, but I want to start right here. Um, and then we'll go through a sale on the other side, I think, somewhere over there. But we're going to start here. So let me zoom in so you guys can see a little bit better um, what's going on. All right. I think that's a bit better right there. All right. So because I'm trading on lower time frames, because I am at HFX master trader, that's what I am. And therefore we, we trade on lower time frames. But like I say all the time, um, the BYOB cash out strategy can be used on any time frame. But because HFX, um, I'm going to use it on a three minute time frame. All right. So let's go over the strategy. We have three indicators when it comes to this strategy. We have the stochastic, which is down here. All right. We have the Hikinashi candle, which is these candles up there. You see some in green, some in red. And we also have the PSAR, which are these dots. You see the dots on top, and then you see the dots on the bottom. So let's explain to you how it all comes together. So let's talk about a buy. 
if we're looking for a buy and we want to get into a trade for a buy, what would that look like for us when it comes to that strategy? So first, we want to look at the stochastic, which is down here. And for the buy, we want to have the blue line cross the red and an upward momentum. And we want to have it near or at the 20, right? At or near the 20, which is over here. So if you look over this way, you see the 20. And let's go from 0 to 100. But when it comes to the cash out strategy, we want to be at or near the 20. And right here, we have the blue line crosses the red and our upward momentum for a buy. And that's what we want to look at first. The next thing we want to look at, we want to look at the candles. All right. The candle is uh, green. And when it comes to the candle, we want to make sure that the candle has a flat bottom. All right. This candle has a flat bottom. And we also want to make sure that the PSAR is at the bottom of the candles. All right. So you see these dots. All right. That is what we're looking for when it comes to the buy. The PSAR has to be at the bottom. The bottom or underneath, however you want to say it, but it has to be at the bottom of the candle. All right. So I'm going to put a line there because in order for us to move forward, we have to make sure that all this is lined up. And this is just part one of the strategy. I always like to put this strategy in two parts, just so people can get a better understanding on what to look at first and then what to look at second, okay? And I'm also going to put my arrow because sometimes I believe that the arrow works better than the line at times. So I just like to put both because I like the visual aids. I want to make sure that everybody else is able to see as well. And as I always say, when you are trading, do not put these lines or these arrows because it is not needed. Okay, so another thing I want to mention, because somebody probably saying, well, this is not at the 20. You're right, it's not at the 20 because it crossed back here. When it crossed back here, you had to wait. Yep, I said it. I did say that word. Mm -hmm. The word that we don't like, wait. Once the blue line crosses the red, you want to, in an upward momentum, you want to wait until you get your first flat candle at the bottom. And that's where this started right here. And you also want to make sure that the PSAR has flipped as well, which is right here. And then that's a good indication that, okay, this is lining up great to get into a trade. And that's what you want to look for when it comes to a buy. All right. So let's talk about a sale. All right. What do we want to look at when it comes to a sale? And I believe we had a drop right here. Yeah. All right. So for a sale, I always like to say it's the opposite, right? For the sale, we want to make sure that the blue line crosses the red at the top, near the 80 or at the 80, right? Blue line crosses the red at or near the 80 in a downward momentum. OK, so this started back here, as you can see, but we were not able to get into this trade until it moved over here. Why? Because that's our first. This is a red candle because we're talking about a sale. And at the same time, it has a flat top. So let me kind of zoom in this a little bit so you can see it has a flat top. And then the piece are also is at the top. So when it first changed over here, when the blue line crossed the red and that downward momentum, we had to wait. We could not get into the trade. Yes, we had to, that word wait. Mm -hmm. And then we just had to wait to the, to the piece our flip is one. And we also had to wait to the first red candle with the flat top. And then that leads us right here. So I am going to put a line right here. And I'm also going to make that red. And I like to do it red just so I won't forget, you know, that it's a sale. Because I don't know about you guys, but for me, when I'm trading and doing different things, um, especially when it comes to the alerts, I might forget uh, <laughs> which line was what. So to help me better organize what I'm doing, um, I like to put them, color code them. All right. So that's the first part of this strategy. All right. The first part is making sure everything lines up. We have the buy and we have the sell, and let's drop down. Now it's time for the second part of the strategy, like I like to mention, is time frame confluence.
So we're gonna drop down to the one minute and we wanna make sure that it's doing the same thing. So it has to be doing the same thing it was doing on a three minute on the one. We wanna make sure it's doing the same thing. All right, so what you mean by, is it doing the same thing? Is it still on the buy and is it still on the sell? So let's look at this and let me kind of zoom in a little bit. Ladies and gentlemen, just bear with me as I be zooming in on this chart because I'm trying to make a better view for everybody to see. So we drop down to the one minute and everything is still the same. We have the red candle, we have the flat top, we have the P-star on the top, and we also have the blue line across the red up here, but it's still in a downward momentum. So we are good on that sale on the one minute. All right, and let's go see what's going on on the buy. Okay, so, all right, I'm adjusting this chart. And you know what, it's like a, I feel like um, when it's time to adjust the charts, it's like <laughs> kind of like driving a little bit. You know how when you're driving and you're looking at your map, or I'm not gonna say map, but I'm gonna say the navigation. And sometimes you have to press that button to get it back in shape so it can get back into alignment so you know where you're going. That's why I feel like I'm feel like I'm navigating you on these charts. All right. So anyway, for a sale, we, I mean, for a buy, I'm sorry, but I know make sure it's doing the same thing for a buy on the one minute, all right? We still have the blue line, I'm sorry, not the blue line, but the green line of the candle, flat bottom, still good, PSR on the bottom, still good, blue line across the red, it crossed right here, it did a slight cross right here, but we're still in upward momentum, so we're still good. Everything is still good on the one minute, all right? Now, last but not least, we're going to drop down to the 15 minute and we want to make sure that it is something that we want to put on our watch list. Okay, that's the difference. The 15 minutes is the difference because we want to make sure it's something we want to put on our watch list, meaning that it looks like it may go into a buy or it looks like it may go into a sale, but I want to put it on my watch list so I can come back and see, you know, is it ready for me? And that's where we're looking at the 15 minute to see, it, is it ready for us yet? And if it's not ready for us, do it look like it's going to be ready for us? All right. So when it comes to the buy, we still have a green candle. We still have the peace star at the bottom. Oh, wait, hold on. Give me a minute. I see, hold on, let me move this over. There it is, look at there. We do have a green candle, all right? The P-star did not flip just yet, but we still have um, the stochastic is still up, it's up there, but it's pointed downward a little bit. Well, hold on, let me move that over on that candle, okay. It's pointed downward a little bit, but that candle, I would definitely put this on my watch list just because it looked like it is definitely getting ready to go in my favor. So yes, I would say yes to this and I go yes to the dress, um, <laughs> yes to the trade. I would say yes to this one and um, go ahead and put that on my watch list because definitely this looked like it's going um, to be in my favor. Um, again, not knowing what's going to happen ahead of time, um, but this one is not far from where we want to go. Um, and when it comes to the sale, all right, the sale is blue line across the red and an upward momentum is what it's doing right now. And then we have the P start on the bottom, and then we have this green candle, but there's a very long wick, all right? That very long wick is an indication that there's a lot of buying and selling that's going on. And that's why that wick is extremely long. Um, it is something that I would definitely put on the watch list because I feel like uh, with the stochastic going in the way that it's going, uh, right here is at the top where the blue line and the red line, the, we have a blue line curve up there and we have the red line a little bit straight. So on this particular one, um, I would definitely say put this on my watch list as well because I know it's coming. Um, but I would just go ahead and put both of these on my watch list before I continue. All right. 
any questions or comments, and let me go ahead and take all of this off so we can continue to go on tonight with our trading for tonight. So any questions, ladies and gentlemen? Um, anything out there that you have questions about on this BYOB cash out strategy? All right, I don't see anything in the chat, in the chat, sorry, I guess, because we have our master traders on tonight. That's what we have. We have people who've been diving um, in the education, looking at our videos, and they have been actively trading, and they already know. All right, so this is what I want to do. Again, I said I know there's some news that's going on, uh, but they're not red folder news. But I still feel like the, the market will be impacted. So I'm going to look at some alerts. So again, um, oh, yeah, hold on. I'm going to look at the alerts to see what's going on in the market. And then I'm also going to um, do our support and resistance lines because that's also important, right? We also want to make sure that we are able to put our support and resistance lines on our charts. And I actually, I have, let's see, I have Euro USD up and I have USD JPY. Now this pair been, it's been dropping for quite some time. Um, and then I have NZD USD. Don't know what's going on on this one, but before I decide to settle on which, what we're gonna look at, let me look at the alerts first to see, you know, what is being, uh, what the market is telling us on what's going on for tonight. And then we can go from there. All right, I think that's great. Until then, um, any questions? What asset was that? I'm please be a little bit clear on that question. Okay, so this is I am that center. All right, so when you go to I am that center, this is the first page that you see. I want to click on strategies. Okay, I'm going to scroll down to HFX. And then my fave is Hourglass, but you can use either one, Liberty or Freedom, it doesn't matter. I'm going to go to Hourglass. And I'm going to see if we have any alerts on Hourglass. And if we don't have any updated alerts on Hourglass, I also have the app as well. And I've been getting a lot of alerts on the HFX app. I don't know if you guys have it on your phone, but if you don't, I highly suggest that you download the HFX called HFX Swipes on your phone. If you just go to your um your app store, no matter what phone that you have, whether it's an Android or iPhone, go to your app store and download um, the app. It's HFX Swipes. It looks like it's gonna have HF, the two letters, only H and F, uh, but it's a pretty cool app. And yes, you get multiple alerts throughout the day. So um, we already have USDJPY. That was nine minutes ago, four minutes ago. The dollar was six minutes ago. Um, the USD was nine minutes ago. And Euro JPY was four minutes ago. All right. So, and I think the reason why is may not get so many alerts tonight is because of what's going on in the news. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm also going to add, um, I want to put the Euro JPY here. I'm going to put that one up here instead of that one because I know for um, that particular pair, they're definitely doing something. Uh oh, let me put my Y. They're definitely doing some things on that one tonight. So I'm going to go to this one. Okay, that pair, I think that was on, I think I was on Euro JPY. I believe that was the pair that I was on. Okay, so I have three different pairs up. And what I'm gonna do now um, is do support and resistance lines because I feel like we may get some action moving. If anything, I think on the Euro, um, on the UJ, that's what I call UJ. I just, you know, abbreviate it. So 
I'm going to mark up this one first because I, I, I feel in my bones, Lord Jesus. I feel it in my bones. Yes, Lord. <laughs> that we may get some movement on this chart. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I am. All right. So what do you guys think? Do you guys think we're going to get some movement on this chart? Actually, you know what, guys? Put a put an AAA in the chat if you practice HFX or even looked at it. If you did anything with HFX trading, you know, whether you did one pair, whether you looked at it, put an AAA in the chat. Because I like to know if you guys are even, you know, trying to practice with it or doing well with it or even looked at it, you know, because I know some people feel like HFX um, could be a little intimidating uh, because it's really fast, but I'm just wondering if you guys even, you know, tried it a little bit. Okay, so let me talk about support and resistance lines real quick, you know, until we get some movement. There we go. All right, well, look at there. I'm so happy you guys are trying this. All right, thank you. Thank you for trying it out. I appreciate that. Okay, so this is what I'm doing right now. So we all know about support and resistance lines, but if you do not know, okay, support and resistance lines, when it comes to HFX, I should say that because there's multiple ways to do support and resistance lines as Ms. Dyer did a great teaching on that psychological levels, which I absolutely love. But for, for HFX, we wanna go a little bit smaller, I should say, and more in depth. Uh, when it comes to the um, support and resistance lines because we're dealing with smaller time frames. So what I'm doing is what I like to call the classic way of doing support and resistance line. And that's three touches or more. And this is basically what I did. So now what I want to do is just zoom in. Okay, zoom in. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your 888. I do appreciate that. Now, we have a lot of movement on these lines, okay? And this one, I'm gonna move up a little bit more, just a little more there. All right, and this is where, I'm gonna move this down. And I like to move it down because I like to know where we currently are um, in the market so I can see what it's doing. So I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit. Zoom in just a little bit. So as you can see, um, this pretty much been going down in a downward trend right here. But this is what I also want to point out too, when it comes to our support and resistance lines, all right? What, what we want to do when you enter the trade is you either, depending on if you're going for a buy or a sell, you always wanna be above the line, okay? You wanna enter above the line, uh, or underneath the line, depending on which way you're going, whether it's a buy or a sell, you don't want to be on the line, okay? Why we don't want to be on the line? Because again, these are support and resistance lines, right? And remember, remember I just said, if there's three or more touches, that's where we put our lines, right? Well, check this out, all right? You see this right here in this zone? You see how many times it tested this line right there? And then I'm just gonna go over, okay? I'm just gonna move over a little bit more. And you see how many times it tested the line here, right? Because we do three or more touches. So if you get into a trade, all right, on the actual support or, or resistance line, you may get stuck because is what it's going to do is it's going to constantly touch the line, right? It's just like you see right here. Right now it's struggling, right? It don't know which way it want to go. Now, according to the stochastic, it's in a blue cross of the line, red, uh, the blue line across the red right here, and it's in an upward momentum, right? So when we look at that, we're like, oh, okay, maybe it's going to a buy. But then look at the PSR, all right? We see our dots, right? The PSR is on top, which means, okay, that means it's a sale. So it's not ready for us to say it's a buy or a sale at the moment because things aren't lined up. That's one. Number two is continuing to hug this line. All right. And let me put the time up here. It's nothing like our time. It's beginning to hug the line. So is trying to make a decision on which way it wants to go. Do it want to continue to go down into the sale or do it want to change courses and go up into a buy? So at this present time, 
would not be a good time to get into this trade until I make a, a, a decision on which way it would go. And not just that, don't forget about the strategy. Everything has to line up for the strategy. And when I drop down to a one minute, still, it's still hugging this line, okay? So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna come back. I'm gonna keep it on a three, and we're gonna come back to that to see if we get any movement there. The next is Euro USD. All right, so I'm going to put our support and resistance lines on here as well. So we are currently right here. All right, and I'm gonna put some right up there. This one will look like it's been a bit choppy as well. We're gonna put that right there. Actually, I'm gonna bring it down. Uh, put it right here. Okay, uh, and on this one, uh, yeah, this one, this one's don't, uh, yeah, no, this one, this one's not ready for us either, okay? It's not ready for us either. It's not lined up and it's not ready for us. So we're gonna go to the next one. All right, we're gonna see what Euro is doing. I see uh, GBP USD just popped up for one minute ago. So I may grab that one too and see if anything is gonna go on with that one. But uh, let me mark up this one. And the reason why I'm doing, you know, anything with the JPY is because of the session that we are currently in. Um, and normally too, when I'm trading in the even time, um, these are the main pairs that, you know, pop up the most. So this is why I like to, you know, I chose these pairs because most of the time around this time, we get some movement. All right, so let me just move this up here. We have a lot going on in the middle there. So as you can see on here as well, um, it went up, went across, came down. All right, so if it's gonna continue this pattern, it may wanna come back up where it came from. So, um, but let's just see what's gonna happen on, the, oh, I'm on a five minute, okay. Oop, well, let's drop down to the three. All right, there we go. Okay. So on the three minute, we have the blue line crosses the red over here. And it's, you know, that momentum is up. We got our peace star right there. We okay over there. Oh, wait, ladies and gentlemen, we may have some. Drop down to the one minute. We're still good on the one. And it's moving fast. This is, okay. Hold on. 15, go back to the three. Drop down to the one. I'm gonna put another support and resistance line just because of how fast this one is already going. This may surpass our other lines. All right, so since this one looks like we may have some movement, let's go to the broker. Um, I wanna see what's going on on the broker. All right, so pocket option is a broker that we use. Um, and I'm going to go to, uh, that was Euro JPY, which is somewhere. Euro JPY, here it is. 56%, that's our profit on this particular pair, if you wasn't sure about what these numbers are. All right. Okay. And I like to do expired time. On um, the difference in the times, the expired time is you're actually in that trade for one minute. Um, if you don't do expired time, you do purchase time, you may be in for less than a minute or a little bit over a minute, if you was wondering what that time frame is for. Okay. So Let's see if we're going to get anything else on here. And look at there. That already decides to. Okay. That already decides to go a different way on the one minute. Wow. Okay. So it gives a little bit of pullback on that. All right. So that's okay. That's okay. We don't have much going on on here. Drop down to the one. 
I'm actually going to put another line, go back to the three. I'm going to put another support and resistance line, another line up here, just in case we get, you know, a little something on there, but that don't look so promising, but anything can happen, right? Anything can happen, guys. Anything can happen. So we're going to put that there. All right. So back to this one, back to you, Jay. Yeah, nothing is promising on there because this looked like it was starting to go up and then look at this candle here. All right, so what I wanna do, I'm gonna get another chart. We have a few alerts in the last six minutes on these. So I'm gonna bring up one of those to see if there's any movement. And if there's no movement, oh man, this one's already oversold. I mean, oh yeah, or overbought up there. Uh, let's see though. Okay, let me open up another one. And I'm gonna check out the other one, the last three alerts that just popped up. I wanna see, hold on, that was, that was Euro AUD. Let's go to GBP AUD, which was one minute ago. You know what? They may all might be following each other in the oversold, overbought situation here. You see that? All right, and let me find out this one gonna be doing the same thing. You know, listen here, GGBP and you are in your AUD. I can't be playing with my emotions here. Y'all can't be doing that. Now a sister wanna trade tonight and y'all be playing around with my emotions. Don't be doing that. All right, let's see if this one's ready for us or is it in the same, yep, that it is. I kind of figured that. All right, that's okay though, that's all right. They don't want to come out and play with us at this present time, but this is what I will do. Since they don't want to play, um, I'll teach a little bit more on support and resistance lines. And then I will mark up, uh, let's see. This one I know is going to continue to move. This is GBP. Hold on, I'm going to mark this one up because I know it's GBP. And I know how GBP get down at times. So let me add some more candles on here because look at what happened. I don't know if anybody traded this today in the classic trading, but um, if you did, um, hopefully you caught all this up in here. Uh, let me put a little bit more candles so I know where to put. Oh, wow. I got to go that far up. Okay. All right. I'm trying to see my, oh, okay. See, this is one of the good reasons about going to the four hour. Could you get to see a big picture? Wow. Okay. So this has a lot of growing to do. Um, I don't know how much far, how, how far it's going to go up, but looking at what we're looking at right here, this last drop, it never surpassed up here. It never came this far up, which means it has the opportunity and the possibilities to go right back up there where it came from. So it haven't came this far up in, in a while. Um, that was February, actually. So, okay. But anyway, um, I get a little excited about that because to me, when I see that, I, I think of money. I, I'm thinking the dollar signs, y'all. I'm thinking the dollar signs. Do y'all see dollar signs when y'all see stuff like that? I'll, if you see dollar signs, when you see this big gap and you see it's trying to go back up, I want y'all to put a one, one, one in the chat. If you see dollar signs, like I see dollar signs. Cause I see dollar signs when I see this. Cause I'm like, oh, oh, okay. This have, the, this have the room to go back up here. Cause it's trying to make its way up. As you can see, it's trying to make its way back up. That's right. I see dollar signs too. Thank you for your one, one, ones. Okay. So I'm gonna drop back down to the three and see how far that was, see how far that was. Oh, that was way up there. Okay, oh well, that's cool. That's cool. All right, 
that was way up there. So this definitely has some opportunity to go higher. But like I always say, um, we can always go back and put our indicators, the pivots on here. But let's check and see what else we got going on um, before I continue to go into some other things that I know that will be helpful when it comes to trading. I will continue where I left off last week when it comes to support and resistance lines on when to enter the market. Um, let's go to the three minute. Okay, nothing there. Uh, this just flipped on the one, not confluent on the three. Uh, this one still in an overbought situation, a little consolidation right there. And yeah, okay. You know what? They ain't out here playing with the sister tonight. They ain't no lane, right? But I do believe the reason why nothing is really moving is because of what is currently going on in the news. And I believe this is why it's saying uh, they don't want to come and play with us tonight. I believe that's what it is. They ain't want to come out and play. But that's fine. That's okay. That's okay if they don't want to come out and play. But what I will tell everybody is if you're going to continue to be up, they this will move when the news is over okay so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go back to i'm going to i'm going to stick here and then i may i may jump around to another pair but i want to continue on what we did last week to kind of narrow down um when to get in and out of the charts um for hfx and how it is helpful um, when to get in and get out. So like I mentioned before, okay, um, when you draw your support and resistance lines when you are trading, remember we said there's three or more touches on a support and resistance line. So you want to be careful by putting, you don't want to put your, well, this is HFX. So it's not so much to take profit. It's more so on when to get into the trade. So you want to get into the trade when you notice that the candle is surpassing your support or resistance lines, depending if it's a buy or a sell. You don't want to get in, for example, like we see this candle right here. You see how it's riding this support, or I should say resistance line right here. It's riding it. It surpassed it here which is great, but then that next candle, it just went into a doji and it just was like, nah, they ain't messing with us on that one. Um, and this is a good one here. It surpassed our line. When it surpassed the line like that, that's a good um, entry to get into the trade. Um, let me drop down to, let me go to another pair. So like this is hugging the line. But let me start from a sale, okay? If we were looking for a sale, like we see right here, this candle, let me kind of zoom this in a little bit more. Okay, so on this candle, of course, right? Everything lines up in a three minutes. So when things line up, okay, and you got your flat candle, the flat top on the candle, this is a good one. This is a good one to get in, all right? This next candle, it started and it went past the line, which is also a good one to get in. So I hope you guys are seeing, you wanna make sure that the candle is, is past the line and not stuck on the line on when to get into your trade. So when you see like it's hugging, like right now it's, it's hugging this resistance line, like it's just not going past it. And they all hanging out, you know what I'm saying? They hanging out at the club. That's what they're doing. They hanging out at the club. So as soon as like this is, this looked like it wanna go up into a buy. We have a blue line crosses the red down here at the 20 in an upward momentum, right? Well, slightly upward, but it's in an upward momentum. And you have the piece star at the bottom. So in this case, you wanna wait until your next flat candle next green flat candle. But when that candle comes, you wanna make sure it's above this line. Not on a line, but above the line, okay? Anybody have any questions on that? And if it's a sale, like here, if it's a sale, 
we want to make sure that it surpassed the line. All right. So let me see if I can get some visual aids on here with some long arrows because I want to get, you know, I want to get jiggy with it. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get jiggy with it. Y'all remember that song? Yeah, I know. I know. I understand. All right. So oh, let me go back. So for sale, hopefully it'll, it'll come with me. It uh, Yeah. Okay. I'm going to put this in a different color since we already have white lines. So I'll put it red. Yeah, we're talking about a red. So you want to make sure that it goes past the line for sale. Okay. And then for a buy, you want to make sure it goes in the opposite direction. So where that, where am I? Oh, here it is. Let's go here. I'm going to put that there. I'm going to put that green because we're talking about a buy. You want to make sure it goes above past this line. And if it's a sale, you want to make sure it's like right there. All right. We don't want to get stuck on the line when it comes to that. So right now we still don't have any movement on this pair. I just want to check some other pairs to see if they decide to come out and play. And nope. No, 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 no one wants to play with us today. Uh, Euro UAD. Maybe this one, but you see how this one is moving past the line, right? Let's take a look at it. You know what, G GBP USD, see that one right there? You know, GBP, you know, some people might not like GBP, but sometimes we can be friends. The candle is forming that you would enter the trade. Like right here, you see how it is. This candle is currently going past this trade, right? Now, everything is not lined up on this one, but me, I would, for the in this case, because it's been riding on these last three candles, I would I will wait for the next candle to see if it's going to form beyond this line. Okay. Now, if you got in, well, let's see what this, well, let's see. Oh, look at there. Okay. See, and this is why I would wait <laughs> for the next candle to see if it's going to surpass our line for this reason right here. We don't want to get a candle with both wicks, you know, going from the top or from the bottom. All right, so, and out of fact, let me just put an arrow here because this is what I want you guys to see. Let me grab this arrow. This, this is, this is how I want this candle to be, above that line. And I say that because we don't want these wicks, as you can see right here, we don't want the wick. We wanted the candle to go above the line, which I thought this one was going to be, but as you can see, that didn't happen. So that wouldn't be a good entry. You know, if everything lined up, okay? If everything's still lined up and you wanna get into a trade, you wanna make sure that that candle is above that line when everything is lined up, okay? Um, so let's just drop down to the one minute. Wow, look at that little short candle there. We got the doji here. And then you have the short candle right there. And I also, oh, that's a new candle. Where's my clock? Oh, count time. Okay, so here's another thing I want to let you guys know too. When you see a small candle, when you see a small candle um, like this, all right, the smaller the candle, there's not a lot of volume in that candle. All right. So you want to wait. I, I, my, my suggestion, okay, is to wait until you see what happened on the next candle. Because the smaller the candle, the more likely it may go in a different direction than you want your trade to go when the candles are this small. Because you see, we had, let me zoom in a little bit. Let me just kind of zoom in here. So here's, and this is actually a good example. 
Because see, you had a nice fat candle right here. That was good and all, right? But then look at that doji that you have right here. And after the doji, you had this little candle right there. And then after that one, we have this one. So to me, you know, it's still trying to get where it wants to go. But look at this, it's already oversold. So there may be, because it's oversold and we have these little candles up in here, very, oh, it's, it's, it's already right here. More than likely, you're getting ready to get a pullback. So when you get, and you get that pullback, if you're in it, if you want to go in as a buy, you want the pullback to happen. So when that pullback happened, then when it goes back up, you have a better time, you have a better entry when getting into that trade. So, and as you see, we have this little red candle here. Again, we already in the oversold, you know, basically a flat line. That's what it did. It flat line from here, from here to there, it flat line. So no, this is not a good time to get into the trade. This is on a one minute. I'm gonna go to the three, the three minute. It did come above this line on the three minute, but it's a very, very short candle. And that is something you don't want. You want to get more volume in this candle. So it's, it's, it, it, it's growing a little bit, but the market is slow right now because it was going on in the news. But this is a good, everything lining up, this candle here, I would just wait until it finished because it can go either way. It can go either way on your trade. And it's a small candle. So I wouldn't chance it. I wouldn't chance it getting into the trade when the candle looks like that. All right. Any questions before I can see or anybody understand what I'm saying? Is there any clarity or any, you know, anything um, that you guys feel like you may need more assistance on? Any questions? Okay, good, good, good. I'm happy it's clear because when you get into the trade, you I like to trade with ease, okay? I know being HFX is quick. You know, a lot of times we jump in and we get so excited. And I'm, look, I, I told, trust me, I understand because that is me sometimes. But then, you know, you have to step back. And, and be a, a smarter master trader and be very cautious and just take your time on when to get into the trade. Take your time when you do that. So you see how this candle, we got 32 seconds. You see how that one now is above our line and you see the thickness of it? Great. That is a good sign that, you know, maybe our next candle would be just as good. So again, is everything lined up? That would be a good entry now because the candle is getting a little bit thicker. But for me, I always like to be, because I'm cautious, I like to wait until the next candle just to make sure I'm a little secure. <laughs> oh my, um, oh, and look at there, look at the next candle. So yes, that looks good so far, I should say. Okay, um, let's see, did anything else move? Um, got just a few more minutes. I wanna see if anything else, anything else move? No, not really, but look, look on here, okay? Two candles above the line. That's a good entry. Two candles above the line, that's, that's good. We're not, we're no longer caught on this support line, on this resistance line now. We're no longer it admitted, admitted decision. And we got two good candles above that line. So that's that's good. I'm gonna drop down to the one minute. On a one minute, of course, we got quite a few that broke the line, which is good. It looked like it's getting ready to flat line. Um, I'm not sure what's going on on the broker side, but if you have it up, that probably be a good time and a good entry to get into that trade because now we have two good candles above our line. 
but you know, I'm going to three minutes too. Okay, so let me go back, drop down to one. All right, so all these little candles, and this is why, another good example. All we got one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so six candles, which is two three minute candles. And they all are above this white line, which brings us back here, why these two are above the line and where that would be a good entry. Now, I will say this, they are small candles and it's okay, it's just gonna move slow. So if we go back to the broker, um, let's go to UJ. What time is it? Okay, let's make sure. Where are UJ at? Oh, here, oh, UJ at 70%. All right, so when we go back to the broker, our candles, those are the last two candles. Well, I'm not gonna use this one. But I'm gonna say these two candles here, they have volume. And I would say you probably would have just made your profit. It would have been, you know, praying to the Lord, Lord, let me win this trade because the candles are, I would say they're medium size. Um, so you probably would have just made your trade and just won the trade um, if you would have gotten to it with these little candles. But you see little candles over here, right? These are, I would say little to minim minimum size. These two candles here, and you look back at the broker, those candles are not as big because that's these two right here. So not a lot of volume in the candle. But okay, so any questions before I, sorry guys, we, we didn't have anything to jump in. Hold on. Oh, okay. See, what time is it? See? They, they ain't right. They ain't right. You see how they did us? They, they ain't fair. They ain't fair. Now that they want to move when my call is over, they, they ain't right. We didn't mark up this chart, so I'm going to close this one. I didn't mark up this one, so I'm going to close that one. Wow, look at that, y'all. Here's my arrow that you can't see. It was right there. Look at that. Don't know if you had this. Don't know if you had it up. But if you had it up, yes, that would be a good time to get into this trade on that candle right there. And I'm going to drop down to the one minute. Wow, look at there. All right. Okay, so uh, I don't see any more questions in the chat. Uh, I want to thank everyone for coming on. I was hoping we get some movement, but we did have some news that was going on. And I believe that's why it slowed us down um, to getting into the market to see what pairs was going on so we can profit on some um, trades. So, uh, but overall, you guys have a, hopefully have a better understanding on when to get into the trade um, when you are currently trading. So I just want to say, continue to trade HFS, continue to practice with it. You know what I'm saying? I want to see more people posting the HFX 777s. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. So if no other questions that I don't see in this chat, I am going to say thank you guys for being on the call. Again, my name is Benita Brantley, the trading diva. This is the BYOB Cash Out HFX Simplified Zoom call. Thank you guys for joining. I will see you on next Wednesday on this call and have a great night.